What's good YouTube, your boy Bosco back again with another video. Today we talking about the Jordan releases for the month of April 2024. There are truly some bangers, arguably some sneaker of the year candidates. Let me know what you guys think about this lineup. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the sneakers, you dig? First on May 4th, the day before single day Mayo, we got the Air Jordan 4 Military Blue retailing for 215 bucks. Yes, if you did not know, they went up $5 on the retail price point for this Jordan 4. Now this Jordan 4 Military Blue holds a significant place in history of Jordan's fourth signature shoe. Definitely launched in 1989 and is also part of the original four. This Military Blue is dropping in 2024 to mark the 25th anniversary, excuse me, 35th anniversary of the Air Jordan 4 Retro. That is definitely a feat in itself. Let me know if you guys are a fan of this color combination. Now, if you did not know, there is a little bit of controversy when it comes to this release. A lot of people were disappointed because the color shade is just slightly different from what we anticipated. These come in off-white, neutral gray, and military blue as the color scheme. That off-white on this Jordan 4 is kind of throwing people off as well as that neutral gray. Let me know if you guys are excited for this or because of the new switch up of the color tones, are you guys not so much interested in this pair? As you can see by the images, its upper is crafted with off-white leather while the overlays are in neutral gray on the toe area. Of course, the military blue accents on the eye stays, midsole, heel tab, and Jumpman logos is definitely what really stands out and a lot of people are happy with the fact that it does have the Nike Air branding on the back of the heel. Give me your thoughts. Are you adding this to your collection? Yes or no in the comments below. Next up on May 9th for a retail price of 125 bucks, we got the Jordan Tatum 2 Easter. I like this colorway, probably one of the better ones to come out so far of the Tatum 2 in my opinion. Now this Tatum 2 comes in light soft pink, mid foam, smoked lilac, medium soft pink, and copa as the color scheme. Really giving off that Easter vibe even though Easter has already passed. You will notice pink, lilac, and mint foam on the exterior foam on a sidewall surrounding the gray pods. Of course, Jason Tatum's JT logos are on the tongue as well as the insoles, while the Jumpman logos are on the lateral midsole and heels. I'm a big fan of this colorway. Cannot wait to see it in hand. Give me your thoughts and opinions about the Tatum 2 overall, and what do you think about this colorway? Next up on May 11th for a retail price of 140 bucks, we got the Air Jordan 1 Low OG Shadow. Now this shadow seems to be a classic from 1985 and a fan favorite coming in black, medium, gray, and white. I know a lot of people were looking forward to this when we got word that these were dropping last year. Let me know if this is something that you will be adding to your collection. A lot of people are more fan of the Jordan 1 Low OG cut as opposed to the other way that they've been releasing. Let me know if that bothers you or not. Does it matter if it's OG cut or not? Is it more about the colorways or the materials or the cut when it comes to the Jordan 1 Lows? Give me your thoughts and opinions in the comments. Before we get to the next shoe, it seems that May is getting off to a great start, picking up the pace for the year for the retros. I think we got two arguably sneaker of the year candidates when it comes to the military blue and this shoe here we're talking about next, which is dropping May 17th for a retail price of 150 bucks. I'm talking about the Travis Scott Air Jordan 1 Low OG Canary. Now these are definitely dope, man. Very eye-catching. Something that I, I'm personally interested in myself. The Canary, light silver, and gum medium brown, along with the racer blue, is a dope color combination for Jordan 1 Low. Of course, you have the classic backwards swoosh that you see on all of Travis Scott's shoes, as well as Travis Scott branding around the shoe and on the heel tabs. Now this shoe's colorway is inspired by Travis Scott's high school, Elkin High Knights, which is a dope theme. I like the fact that they did that. Other key details, as you can see, it has a white base with the canary yellow overlays and the blue accents. I believe these do come with extra laces, a white midsole and a gum outsole. They executed this one pretty nice. Let me know if this is something that you guys are excited for. Next up on the 18th of May for a retail of 190 is yet another classic banger. We got the Air Jordan 11 Low Space Jam. A lot of people are a big fan of this shoe, including myself as well. As I said, May is definitely turning up the heat. And so far, I think all four releases or five releases that we spoke about are on point. If you rate them from a 1 to 10 based on release volume, 
probably an 8 to 10 on each one of these shoes. Let me know if you guys agree with that. But like I said, these come in black, varsity royal, and white. Very classic shoe. We had the Space Gem 11s. Now they're bringing back the Space Gem 11 lows. Let me know if this colorway is something that you're more looking forward to adding to your collection, or are you done with Jordan 11 lows overall? As for the details, you see it has black mesh complemented by black patent leather mud guards. You have the Varsity Royal accents. I love the original Concord purple detailing seen on the first edition, but this one has more of a Varsity Royal theme. I do like the white midsole, and of course the translucent outsole really makes the shoe pop. Give me your thoughts about the Jordan 11 Low Space Gen. As for May, it just keeps getting better. Next up on the 22nd for a retail price of 250, we have the J Balvin Air Jordan 3 Rio. Now these come in black, solar flare, total crimson abyss as the color scheme. Definitely a highly anticipated shoe, arguably another sneaker of the year candidate. As I said, May is on fire. As you can see, it has a black leather base with gray elephant print overlays on the toe and heels. Other details include the gradient midsole, translucent heel tabs with J Balvin's logo. These are truly a head turner and in my opinion, definitely one of the sneakers of the year so far. Gotta be top five when it's all said and done. Let me know if you guys agree with that. Now, next up is something that is an acquired taste in my opinion, dropping May 25th for a retail price of 200 bucks. We have yet another colorway of the Air Jordan 12. These feature white, gem red, and black as the color scheme. Now, some people like these because of the black and white, but some people do not like that red. So I feel like this might turn down the volume a little bit in May, but let me know if this is something that you guys will be excited for, or is that red on the shoe throwing it off? As you can see, the white tumble leather is looking really good that extends onto the tongues. You have the black accents on the mud guard, lining and heels, metallic gold eyelids replacing the silver on the normal ones. Then you also have the gem red highlights on the Jumpman overlays and branding, which is really, really where it's all about if you like this shoe or not. Give me your thoughts about this Jordan 12 overall in the comments. Next up, we got a retro that in my opinion is straight out of the Mocha family. We have dropping on May 29th for a retail price of 180 bucks. The Air Jordan 1 High OG Women's Exclusive Latte. These come in black, legend medium brown, white, and sell as a color scheme. Pretty much the same colors as any one of the mochas that dropped recently. These are women's exclusive, so if you have a men's size 10 and a half, you're in luck. No extended sizes for these, so I'm in luck, and anybody wanting something bigger than a 10 and a half is out of luck as well. Let me know if you guys are a fan of this. White base with the black and latte or medium brown accents. You cannot go wrong with these. Some lace swapping might make these shoes pop a little bit more, but let me know if you guys agree and feel like these are part of the mocha family. Will these sit, or will they fly off the shelf? Next up, we got another classic coming back in May on the 30th for a retail price of 300 bucks. The Air Jordan 17 Low Lightning. Very classic shoe, kind of an acquired taste, but I scooped these up back in the day and I'm looking forward to adding them to my collection again. Jordan wore these in 2002 during the All-Star game when he was a member of the Wizards. Now they're making their first return as a retro release in 2024. A lot of people are excited about this because they will be coming with the briefcase. I know there was some rumors before that it wasn't, but because they're priced at 300 bucks, that's why you can expect to see that briefcase with them. Let me know if you guys are feeling these. Are they nostalgic to you or is this something easy for you to pass? This Jordan 17 low comes in white, lightning, black, and chrome as the color scheme, featuring a white leather upper with black dynamic fitter inner sleeve for a more supportive fit. Other details include the contrasting accents on the signature chrome strip that you can peel off the heel. I definitely like the briefcase as I said before. It has a full length shank plate and a TPU heel stabilizer for support. So this is still really a good option to actually hoop in or to wear them for casual wear. Let me know if you guys are picking them up or passing on them. Now when it's all said and done, May was kind of a lame month when it came to Air Jordan retro releases, but May is turning up the heat. We got arguably two to three sneaker of the year candidates in this month alone. Let me know if there's any one of these guys you guys are scooping up. What are your favorites? What are your highlights? What are your must haves? Give me your feedback, of course, in the comment section below. It's your boy Bosco. I'll see you in the next video. Deuces.